Hi everybody, it's me Nina. Hope you're having a blessed Sunday. And today we are going to be reading 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 9 and 10. But we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Okay, so now we'll read the two pages. And let's see here. We have union with Christ, and that makes all the difference. We come to these important verses, and we are reminded that all of these beautiful declarations are possible only because of our union with Christ. Peter was just referenced Old Testament prophecy in telling us that just as Jesus is a living stone, we too are living stones that are being built up into a spiritual household. Now Peter will reference several more Old Testament passages to give us an even deeper view of who we are and what Christ has done for us. Peter is making a shocking statement as he speaks to Christians. He is saying that they are Israel. They are a spiritual Israel. The church is the chosen people of God that is united with Jesus. These two short verses reference three key passages that will help us better understand what Peter is saying. These passages are Exodus 19 verses 5 and 6, Isaiah 43, and Hosea chapter 2 verse 23. If you want to write those down um, and study on those later, that would be good if you wanted to. Okay, Peter references these passages to show us how they have been fulfilled in Jesus and how we experience that fulfillment in Christ. In Exodus 19, the people of Israel had been delivered from Egypt and were at the base of Mount Sinai. God was giving them the law and a covenant that if they would keep the law, they would be blessing. But if they disobeyed the law, there would be great conscience. In verses 5 and 6, God tells them that if they will obey the covenant, they will be his treasured possession, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. There on Mount Sinai, the people promised that they would do everything that the Lord had commanded. If you remember back to the Old Testament, though, you know that they did not. They did not, and they could not. They could not keep the law in their own strength, but there was one that would keep the law. Jesus came as the promised Messiah. He lived the perfect life that we could not live, and he died the death that we deserved. On another mountain generations later, Jesus spoke the words of the Sermon on the Mount and said that he had not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it which is in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. His perfect life and his sacrificial death did just that. Jesus fulfilled what Israel never could. Now in him, we take part in these promises made long ago. We are a treasured possession, a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation because we are in him. In Isaiah 43, we find the message of hope and deliverance to God's people in exile in Babylon. The people of God had broken the covenant and found themselves in exile, experiencing judgment for their sin. But God would bring a message of hope through the prophet Isaiah. God would not leave his people in exile. He would make a way for them. The hope of Israel and of the world is the Messiah who they longed for. Jesus is our hope. Isaiah 43 verse 1 speaks of God's people as redeemed and called by name, and that redemption was made possible through the cross. 
Isaiah 43, verses 20, 21, speaks of this chosen people that God had created for himself so that they could praise him. Peter draws on this exile imagery when he addresses his letter to the elect exiles, and then he shows us that we are the people of God, are now part of this chosen remnant called out of every tribe, tongue, and nation. We are the chosen people who have been called from darkness into light, just as God spoke light into darkness in Genesis 1.1. 1, 1, he has spoken light into the darkness of our lives and called us into his light by his word. Now our purpose is to declare his glory. We were made for worship. In Hosea chapter 2, verse 23, we encounter the people of Israel again in their covenant unfaithfulness. Though God has pursued them, they have rejected him. In their unfaithfulness, the people had been called no mercy and not my people. But God in his steadfast love had promised a day when no mercy would be shown mercy and not my people would be made the people of God. This is our story as believers. We were far from God, but have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We were under the wrath of God, but mercy has been extended to us. Union with Christ makes all the difference. Called from darkness to light, made a new creation, chosen in him, holy in him, a royal priesthood hidden in a great high priest, a people in him. So many things that this verse tells us that we are, but all of them are only made possible in him. We have nothing to bring to the table, yet in him we have been given everything. We are because he is. Now in him we take part in these promises made long ago. We are a treasured possession, a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation because we are in him. All right, now I've got the four, I don't really know, they're not uh, questions, maybe just um, things to make our minds, uh, use our minds, I guess, in the discernment of the verses and stuff that we've read. But I'm going to go ahead and um, pause the video. I'll do the questions and I'll come back and read you the questions and my answers. Okay, number one. Make a list of all the things these verses say that we are. Okay, we are living stones being built into spiritual households. We are a new creation. We are chosen in Him. We are holy in Him. We are because he is. Number two, what do these verses say that our purpose is? Read Isaiah 43 verses 20 through 21. It also gives us the answer. So I said our purpose is to worship and through Isaiah it talks about um, the praise. We are to praise. Okay, number three, Look up the word union and write the definition below. Okay, union is an act or instance of uniting or joining two or more things into one. And the third one, it says to read 1 Peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 10 and make a list of the ways that Jesus is described and the way that he, that we are described. How does this chapter point to our hope in him? And that was too much for me to write down because I thought I'm just going to read it. And um, you guys can pick out what you believe to be the description of uh, Jesus and of ourselves. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and envies and all the evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, if so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, 
but chosen of God and precious. Ye also, as living stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay a Sion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and that he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. And to ye, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So, they had just taken right from the Bible for this lesson. And um, we are now an appointed people. We have, we have jobs to do. We have things to, um, to do studying and and showing people how good our Savior is. And we are only human. We still make mistakes. We still have so much to learn. And um, every time I sit down and do these, this is different than the regular studying that I try to get done. Um, God really opens up something for me and, and, and shows me through learning here about Peter that how blessed I am but yet how much I need to grow in God's word instead of in other words instead of drinking of the milk I am no longer a babe in the word because I have been serving Christ for since 40 some years and I should be now eating of the meat um, that just means I, I need to dig in deeper and be more knowledgeable than I was when I was a young Christian. So it's letting all of us know that, like I said, we're not perfect. We all have lots to learn. Even, you know, I, I've heard pastors and preachers that have been on the way for 50 years or more. And um, they all have, they all say that. You know, they can read the same verse sometimes, you know, hundreds of times. And all of a sudden it will open up and God will show them something through that verse that they hadn't thought about and reading it all those times past. That's the wonderful thing about God's word. When he's trying to deal with you and teach you and, and draw you near, he gives us words that, I'll just say for instance, I've been watching a channel called AIG Farms. It's all about God. That's the name of the channel on YouTube. And I recommend um, checking it out. This young family is from Mississippi. And they are servants of Christ. And they make sure that everybody knows on each video. Not a shove down your throat. But it's, it's a beautiful family following Christ. The, the dad of the family has spe spent time in prison. And... Um, he found the Lord while in prison, and it has changed him. So today I was listening to their their uh, video they put out, and Megan is the, the wife and the mother of three little boys. She was talking that God had given her a word today, and in her mind, it meant something else. But when God started showing her, and what that word actually meant, she was like almost dumbfounded by how God can draw out things in our lives, make us realize things, and shows us things. And in a way that if you're not a Christian, if you have not received Christ into your life, 
It's amazing. Amazing. Sometimes things will come across and, and something will come into your mind. And that's what we mean when we say that God gave us a word. If we're doing God's will, working in the way that God wants us to, sometimes we'll have a, a word come in our mind that we just, it's almost, you can feel the spirit of Christ and you know that he's wanting you to look on that and to study on that and to apply that more than anything to your own life. So I'm not going to tell you the word in case you guys want to go over there and watch it. I, I'm telling you that channel has grown leaps and bounds. And if you see what Christ has done to them, for them, in their channel alone, you can't help but, but know that those that young couple is working for the Lord. And um, they have really helped out me. Um, so yeah, if you want to check them out, I'm going to uh, try to remember in the comments, no, not in the comments, in the description below, I'm going to put their channel there with the video that I'm talking about. And it's not a real long video, but if you want to learn a little bit about Megan in that, um, she's a beautiful young Christian woman and I, um, I support them hundred percent. So that's going to be it for today. It's good. But I want to thank God for each of you. And I want to thank him for showing me things, no matter how rough, how hard this world can be and how much harder and worse that it's probably going to get. I know that my faith in Christ is what has carried me through all these 40 some years and what will give me the strength to carry on to the end. It may be just uh, me and Christ at the end. You know, we don't we don't know how our life's going to be at the end. But as long as I have Christ by my side and filling my heart, that's all that I need in this world. I'm thankful. I am so thankful for my husband and my family and for each and every one of you. And uh, may God bless you today and throughout the week. And I will talk to you on the next video. Bye-bye.